There are several ways to define styles for an HTML page. We can declare styles in line within the HTML element using the style attribute, or internal within the HTML file using a style element, or with an external CSS file. Let's look at inline CSS first. An inline style is added directly to an HTML element. That way it's clear which element we're styling, so we don't need a selector. In this example, we're styling this P or paragraph element. We define the style rules in line using the element's style attribute. We set the style to a string containing a set of CSS property and value pairs, enclosed in quotes. Here we tell the browser to display this P element with a font size set to a value of 40 and a color of red. Let's try out some inline styles. We are back in VS Code with our resume folder open. I still have live server running and displaying the web page here on the right. When using inline styles, we set the style for an element inside that element using the style attribute. Let's style the header. We specify the style attribute equals and a string containing our style rules. Let's set the background color to Oh, cool! VS Code provides a list of color options. Let's pick dark slate gray, and we'll end the style rule with a semicolon. Notice what VS Code does when we specify the color. It provides a thumbnail of that color so we can confirm our choice. Hover over the color, and we see a color picker to adjust the color as desired. Looking at the browser, we see the header style changed. But now we can't easily read the headings. In the H1 element, we'll use the style attribute to set the font size to 40 pixels and the color to white. For inline styles, ensure the style rule is within the quotes. We'll talk more about units, such as PX, and colors a little later in this course. Now we can clearly see the name. Next, let's change the H2 element. Using the style attribute, we'll set the font size to 30 pixels, the color to white, and let's make the job title all uppercase by setting the text-transform property. VS Code supports CSS and provides the list of valid property values for us. That's helpful. Let's pick uppercase, and the job title displays an uppercase. Now let's style our paragraphs. In the P element, we'll use the style attribute to set the font size to 24 pixels and the color to slate gray. To style the other paragraph, we have to repeat the styles. I'll copy and paste the style attribute. That looks a little better. I'll close the browser for now. In VS Code, when we're done with the browser, click the port number here to close Live Server. And let's go back to the slides. Inline styles allow us to set the styles for specific elements directly in line with those elements. It's simple, and it's clear which styles affect which elements. However, there are issues with defining styles in line. First, inline styles mix the content we marked up with HTML with our CSS styles. This makes it harder to modify and maintain both the HTML and the CSS. Second, we end up with lots of repeated code. In our small example, we already have several repeated styles. And third, it's significantly more difficult to define a consistent style on the page and throughout all of the pages of the website. Imagine using inline styles for multiple pages, then deciding to change the site font color from slate gray to cornflower blue. We'd have to find and change every styled element. No thank you. An alternative option is internal CSS. Internal CSS uses a style element in the head section of the page to define the styles for that page. Since the styles are no longer in line with an element, we must select which element the style applies to. That's the purpose of our selector. In this example, we select all the P elements on the page and give them a consistent style using CSS property and value pairs. 
The HTML then requires no inline style information. Internal CSS helps ensure a consistent style on the page, but doesn't help us with consistency throughout our web pages. So, we declare a style rule with a CSS property, followed by a colon, the property value, and ending with a semicolon. Some property values require units. There is no space between the value and the units. We'll talk more about units shortly. As we saw in the demo, we can add an inline style as an attribute of an HTML element. But using inline styles makes it more difficult to keep a consistent style throughout the website. We also mentioned internal styles. With internal styles, we use a style element nested within the head element to declare the styles for a page. But that doesn't help with consistency across all our web pages. Often a better option is external CSS, as we'll see next. Don't forget to like and subscribe!